NFL previews, and we are going to start with the AFC South today. So we are going to cover the AFC South and the NFC South. Uh, we'll go ahead and fire into the Houston Texans. Went 10-6 and six last year, not too shabby. Uh, their win total right now as it sits, and we're going to use five dimes today. Uh, their win total is at eight. To go over is plus 100. To go under is minus 120, so they think it is more likely that they will go under. Um, to win the division, they are plus 330. Coach is Bill O'Brien, and he is maybe the worst GM ever at making trades. He is absolutely awful. If you look at the Hopkins trade, if you look at what they gave up to uh, to get, oh, God, I had his name on the tip of my tongue. Um, well, they got rid of Clowney for nothing, too. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they got rid of him for nothing. But uh, what was the the uh, Brandon Cooks? Brandon Cooks. No, they got in. yeah, they got Cooks, but they gave up too much for him. What the, yep. the offensive lineman from the Dolphins? Oh, uh, uh, oh, uh, Tunstall. Yes, Laramie. Yes, Laramie Tunstall. Um, oh boy. So you know they they, they gave up for that they gave up two firsts for him, Ooh. and then still had to pay him. You know, I mean, it's yeah, just and, insane. And it paid paid for him on this way, and then paid up for him on the back end. Exactly. So, um, so last year offense pretty good, number twelve in yards per play. 5.7 yards per play last year. Defensive yards per play, 6.1. That was number 32. Worst in football. Now, it's I, not it, good, is it? That surprised me. That, but wait I, a minute. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, don't, I can't understand this. J.J. Watt's on this football team, Gary. <laughs> the, 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 hang on now. Hang on. Are you telling me that J.J. Watt didn't cure all the ails of the defense for the Texans? I know, right? Isn't it, because it, I'm pretty crazy. sure everybody in the world has convinced me that J.J. Watt is God's gift to defense and football. Yeah. And I if he's on the team, we're going to mic him up, and he's going to shout, and he's going to yell all the right things. Now, he's not going to make any sacks. He hadn't done that in a couple of years. He's not going to make it through an entire game. No, he can't do that either. But J.J. Watt, he's supposed to be a game changer, right? Their game changer is Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson is the guy. Um, look, they got they still got wide receiver Will Fuller on offense. They brought in Brandon Cooks. They got Randall Cobb. Um, you know, okay, the, the issue with Fuller is that he can't stay healthy. He hadn't played all 16 games in a season ever. It's never happened. Um, I brought up the stat to you last year how much more successful their offense is when he's on the field, but can you trust him to be on the field all the time? And he's proven right now, no. Uh, on defense, you know, they are going to lean on rookie defensive tackle Ross Blacklock. Uh, I believe the kid was from uh, TCU, right? That is um, too much to put on a rookie. That defense is not good enough. I know, right? Uh, they they are going to depend on him. And, they, I mean, they brought in some some guys to help shore up the secondary, but the secondary was atrocious against the pass last year. Just I don't, I don't I don't trust it. On top of that, turnover margin was number 15. They evened out at 0, 0.0. So, um, with that said, I – I just don't see a whole lot that I like from this team, but I do like Watson. Like I, I, I like Watson. I trust him. I, I've got him going eight and eight, um, okay. which is exactly what the win total is. We're close here, we're but we're I, close. I, I don't, I don't like the team. I don't like the direction that they're going. So I got him nine and seven, and I'll tell you why. Bill O'Brien, for all of his badness of being a GM, and it's all real and it's true and it's legit. He's actually a really good coach. Yeah. Like when the game starts, he he's pretty good at what he does. I think they'll be fine because of Watson. I think the, this division's not super tough. You have a team in this division that you get to play twice that's openly trying to tank, I believe. And so that, you know, if you can chalk up two W's there and then just, you know, win, you know, I guess basically my logic is is can you win seven games and beat the Jags twice? Um, I can get you to nine and seven. Uh that's that's all I can think of here. I, I but Watson is Watson's it. If if Watson can be all things to all people, that's awesome. You're putting way too much on him. Yeah. And and I'll tell you all I can hope for is after this season he is disgruntled and he is ready to leave and he finds himself a home in the <laughs> north side of Boston. I knew where this was going the whole time. The whole time. All he right. would look wonderful. Same colors, just a little bit different. Arrangement. Yes, agreed, agreed. All right, let's uh, let's dive into the Indianapolis Colts, who went seven and nine last year with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback. Um, offensive numbers were not good; they were pretty awful in the passing game. The rushing game was not bad, though. Obviously, Marlon Mack and, and that bunch. 
Uh, win total this year is eight and a half. To go over is minus 135. To go under is plus 115. So they think it is significantly more likely that they will go over the eight and a half. To win the division, they are your favorites to win the division at plus 120. Kind of surprised me. Uh, Frank Reich in his third season. Let's uh, let's go through the yards per play and all the stats and whatnot. Uh, yards per play, 5.2 on offense. That is good for number 24, so that was that was not great. Uh, defensive yards per play, 5.6. That was good for number 18. Again, eh, middle of the pack, whatever. Turnover margin was number 12. That is one thing that Jacoby Brissett did not do is turn the football over. He only had six interceptions last year. Uh, that's that's not awful. Phillip Rivers coming in, uh, does he make them a division favorite? Like, I, I think I like him in this spot, and... He and, and Reich have got some history together. But, man, you know, he, he threw 23 touchdowns and 20 interceptions last year. Like, that's a lot of interceptions. Uh, I don't know that it's going to improve drastically. I mean, obviously, he gets to play the Texans twice. So, I mean, that helps. But I don't know, man. The Jags twice? Yeah. That's, okay, that's a valid point. Uh, but even then, I, th- I think the Jags have a pretty good secondary. I mean, we'll, we'll get to no, them they, here. No, later. That, that team's done. Uh, they've got an average wide receiver core. Uh, they did draft Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, to come in. T.Y. Hilton didn't play well last year. Had the T.Y. Hilton played hurt last year. Yeah, he was hurt. Yeah, he, he only had, uh, what, 45 he's, receptions last he's, year. He's completely healthy. He's fine. He's had a great offseason. Uh, and I think he's a little banged up now, but it's just soft tissue. He's just he's just trying to not work out because he's a veteran. He's been there forever. Paris Campbell is going to be fine. Paris Campbell is going to be good. Uh, Listen, they brought I'm, in uh, DeForest I'm, Buckner. I'm, I'm, I'm stopping. I'm just, I'm, I'm just stopping this now. This team's going 11 and 5. This team's going to dominate this division. Frank Wright is an absolute. I'm going to use the big bad word real quick, okay? I'm sorry. I apologize. I know viewers go down. I'm giving you a heads up. So good. Frank Wright's a motherfucking wizard, okay? <laughs> okay? This guy took Nick Foles in a trash ass offense team and not only won a Super Bowl, but beat a team that did not punt the entire game, okay? Yeah. He, he, the Eagles. What have they done since since Frank Wright has left? I'll give you the answer. Nothing. Nothing. They're the equivalency of the NCAA. They're just worthless. All right? I mean, they won the com- division last year. They're completely worthless. <laughs> oh, okay. How good was that? How good I mean, was that? The weakest, seven, division, I mean, weakest division the world's ever seen. Just trash. So, anyway, <laughs> I'm telling you, Frank Wright is an absolute mastermind. The best years that uh, Phil Brevers ever had, long time ago, he's a little long in the tooth, he's old, we're with Frank Wright as an offensive coordinator in San Diego. Okay. They brought in Jonathan Taylor, him and Marlon Mack. They're going to run the football. This is probably the best offensive line in the league. Paris Campbell, Michael Pittman Jr., Taywa Hilton. This offense is going to roll. They are going to beat people up. They're not great on defense, but I think they're going to be good enough. I think they're going to get better on defense. I mean, they brought. I think they're they, going to get better on defense. They signed because, because they're going to sustain drives a lot longer. Yeah, I like Jacoby. Jacoby played most of the year hurt last year. Okay, this is the best offensive line Philip Rivers has ever played behind in his entire life. He's been playing football for like 19 years. Okay, and every offense he's had, offensive line has been like a bottom three to bottom five offense. Okay. This is the best he's ever had, and and he is about to make everybody pay. I uh, I've got him nine five. and seven. Um, it, so you you're going way way over the eight and a half. Uh, Eleven so, and five. And cheers Frank to that. Wright. Frank Wright is they're loaded on offensive talent. And Frank Wright is an absolute wizard. Okay, okay. I've I've got him nine and seven. I mean, would it shock me to see ten and six, maybe even eleven and five? If uh, if Rivers doesn't throw the ball away, if he doesn't throw it to the wrong colored shirts, then yeah, why not? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to justify all those wrong color shirts. They're playing from behind every game. And so he's making press passes, and he's getting pressed while he's doing it constantly. That's why his interception rate was always so bad. If you watch the games and you watch the interceptions, yeah, they're bad throws. And he is being chased for his life, and he doesn't run very well. And they're behind. He's got to make a big play. They can't dink and dunk and matriculate the ball down the field. They got to score fast because because they they've sucked the entire game. Their defense has, has given up big play. He just played on bad teams. Those teams haven't been good in a while in San Diego. And then when they moved to LA, they've been even worse. 
I mean, o- other than two years ago, which I no, mean, they, even they, even two years ago, he he carried that team. Him and Keenan Allen carried that team. Okay, okay. a few players carried that team. Melvin yeah. Ingram and Joey Bosa had great year. Their secondary was trash that year. They're, like they had like seven big players that big, made plays. Everybody else was from a scrap heap. Uh, you might be right. I mean, they, they still That's went why what, when like they played a four? professional I mean, football team like the Patriots. They got completely dismantled. Okay, and they would have gotten dismantled had they played anybody else that had a real head football coach. But they went a long time without that. Okay, okay, I'm with you. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, I love this team. I love so this Colts, team this year. you you absolutely love, love the Colts. Love them. Um, let's move on. This is a team that you do not love, and I don't know that anybody does right now. That yeah, would be the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, six and ten last year, which was kind of impressive, really. If you yes. if you look at what they did, I mean, good gracious, their win total this year is five. To go over is plus one hundred five. To go under is minus one twenty five. So obviously, they expect you know the under to win the division plus twenty five hundred. They're saying basically there is no way, no way. Uh, Doug Marone is the head coach entering his fourth season, and I would believe that it will be his last season because they have sold the farm. Uh, this is the the Gardner Minshew show. Uh, let's uh, let's dive through the stats right quick from last season. Offensive yards per play, 5.4. That was good for number 19. Defensive yards per play, 6.0. That was good for number 29. That is not a good number that you want to see. Turnover margin, only number 20. They, they gave up .1 turnovers per game, which uh, better than I anticipated, really. Um, it, look, it, it's the Minshew show. A- everything about this is the Minshew show. They just cut Leonard Fournette uh, for nothing. Said they couldn't find a trade partner, but, I mean, they don't really have a lot behind him. So, it, you know, what are we going to do here? They it, Everything about this team screams tank, except for they went out and they signed linebacker Joe Schobert. I don't understand, but because he's like a good linebacker. He was good for the Browns, and they gave him some pretty significant money. Why? That no, that made no, no they sense. They still have to field a team. Well, I mean, and I get just it. signing for this year. It's not a one-year deal, is it? No, it's not. It's just. No, then there you go. They, they're still building a team, man. That's fine. Yeah. They're not going to, like, not sign somebody. Go ahead and get them. True. Uh, Josh Allen still got some growing to do. Has not looked great, but he's, you know, he's had flashes of brilliance. C.J. Henderson is uh, is their first round draft pick cornerback? Uh, I think it, they got a good foundation to build on with those three guys. But other than that, I mean, this I is... I don't know, man. That defense doesn't impress me at all. I mean, I, I thought no, no, Josh it's Allen a... was going to be the tits when he got into the league. He just hadn't been. Well, but he, he hasn't had any help at all. In, and <laughs> when, when you're, you're on defense and you're a pass rusher, you don't need help. You just go get the guy. No, I mean, look for for the Colts. I think Justin Henderson or Justin Houston, who was not good last year. Uh, I think he's going to be opened up a whole lot more this year because of DeForest Buckner coming in. Like it, it, it's it's another way to open up. It, it's just like offense where you're creating space on that defense for him to be able to get back there. Yeah. I mean that's the deal. Good gracious, what <laughs> is that Maui? <laughs> Hell yeah, he's losing his damn mind. <laughs> I think it's storming outside. Yeah, it's, sorry. Uh, it, it was doing that here. It was doing that here. Um, so with that said, like they're not very good on offense. They don't have a lot of weapons. They're not very good on defense. Don't have a lot of um, uh, foundational pieces. They got like three guys that I would build this defense around, but they're not there yet. Um, I, I mean, this is this is tankathon. I mean, that's a hundred percent what this is. What uh, I think I, so too. I've got them four and twelve. It. Go ahead. But I, I've got them four and twelve, and that's you know, I, and that may be nice. You so I, I got them two and fourteen. I actually think they're going to be more a four and twelve, a six and ten team. I, I think that's the truth. Uh, I think I was a little. I just basically I print out a big sheet. I go down everybody's schedule. I mark wins and losses. Then I count them up. Um, I, I think you're more close to the to the right number than I am. Okay, let's say that. I don't think they're going to be that bad. A, I actually think Garner means you could play. B, I think I think this receiving quarter is pretty good. Okay. And, and I think Doug Marone's a, a pretty good head coach, to be honest with you. I just think he's been a disaster there because they just haven't supported him with any talent. We, we, we've gone through and hashed out the, you know, they've got like yeah, Tom, 10 Tom times. Coughlin has yeah, done a terrible destroy, job. He, he destroyed that team. He destroyed it. And he's gone now. But but the, the, the foundation has been crumbled, and it's got to be rebuilt. 
are they going to do that around Doug Marone? Um, I don't know. I think he's a good coach. I will tell you this. The offense I trust, Jay Gruden, Jay Gruden has always had a pretty good offense. Even I mean, even some of those bad Washington teams could put up points. It couldn't stop anybody. Some of those bad Cincinnati teams back in the day always put – I mean, we thought Andy Dalton, you know, could you win a Super Bowl? No, but could he win a couple <laughs> playoff games? Maybe. And and when Jay left, you know, it just oh, kind of went downhill. Yeah. I think I think he's a really good OC. I, I think Marone's a really good head coach. I think they've got a lot of rebuilding to do. If I was ownership, I would be okay rebuilding around these guys. I really would. Yeah, but if that was the case, then wouldn't you want to start that right now? Or do you just do well, you tank you gotta, to? Well, you got to you. Well, I mean, you tanking to get? Yeah, you got to tank to get picks. How? I mean, what? Do you, what else are they supposed to do? How? What would you do to rebuild around them? You I mean, try to get question, picks, right? Yeah, you try to get players. It's it's just but, so strange to me to not try to win. You know, and that's what it feels like they're not doing. I mean, but at the same time, Miami did this last year. Yep. You know, like they that whole organization tried to tried get rid of everybody lose. that was good. Yeah, and they did get rid of everybody that was good. And, they got and, rid of them all except for Devontae Parker. And still won five games. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's that's why, you know, I went 4-12 and 12 instead of 2-14. and 14. You're, you're, like, I, I assure you, I'm telling you, when we're done, your number's closer than my number. I, I promise you that's going to be real. You you might be right. You I might really be believe right. that because I, I'm giving you my number. I I went through this is what I think will happen. Wins law. I didn't just look at a team, but because if you'd have just said, "Look at these teams. Give me the record that you think they're going to be," I probably wouldn't have made the Colts eleven and five. I probably would have ten and six. But but I also would have definitely said, "I think this team can win five games." It's somewhere between six and four. Six is their ceiling. I think four is their floor, and and that's the world they are. I trust. I, I think this offense has too much talent. I really do. I think they're going to struggle unless they just start dealing those guys away. But the problem is those guys are all really young. Yeah. So. I mean, that's that's who you would build around. Yeah. All right. Let's move into the last team in the AFC South. And that would Semi-local be... Semi-local team? Can we claim them as the local yeah, team? Yeah, we're going to claim them. I mean, it's a, we, look, we're based around Memphis. Uh, we love Nashville. We don't see ourselves as a stepchild yeah, this of Nashville. Is, this ain't a rivalry. We, no, we're no, all no. good. We uh we like the Titans. We pull for the Titans. So yes, sir. Titans uh Tennessee Titans went nine and seven last year. They have gone nine and seven for four straight years, dating back to a, a different head coach ago. Uh, Mike Vrabel enters his third season. Their win total this year is eight and a half. To go over is minus one fifteen. To go under is minus one hundred five. So they lean slightly to nine wins as opposed to eight, uh, which makes sense because they've done it for four straight years. To win the division, they are plus two hundred. Um. Let's go through the stats right quick. Offensive yards per play, 6.0. That was good for number five in the NFL last year. Defensive yards per play, number 16. Gave up 5.5 per play. Turnover margin was number five. That's really good. So they uh, they gained half a turnover every single game. Uh, they signed Tannehill to a, a really massive contract. They signed Derrick Henry to a four-year $50 million contract, which I good think was, was good pretty contract. good. Uh, I thought it was good as well. A.J. Brown, uh, I think he might be poised for a breakout year this year. I mean, the second half of last year, he really uh, opened up once he figured out that offense. Uh, they drafted running back Darrington Evans in the second round. He is going to be the backup for Derrick Henry. Yeah, he he is not touching the field. At, you don't think he's touching the field at all? Hell no. They are going to make Henry a three-down back. Oh, I, I would almost guarantee that. But I do think you have to spell him at some point, oh, right? Oh, well, yeah. So, yeah, yeah okay, he's going to okay, see the field. But okay. He has he has virtually no value other than this guy's going to rest. We're going to pass the ball, pretty much, pretty much. It, it's kind of it's what Deion Lewis turned into, right? Oh, so, Deion Lewis was at least. But the difference is, is Deion Lewis could block because he'd been in the Patriot system for long enough. He knew how to block when they weren't going to give him the ball. And I think that um, that's why they gave Darrington Evans, or they they drafted him. I think that's why they drafted him. The is, problem uh, is, is he's a rookie. Rookies never know. Rookie agreed. running backs are the worst blockers in the world. Tannehill get killed if they do. But well, he was he was at App State. He learned under Satterfield. Like I, I trust this guy. I mean, looking at the film and whatnot, he rookies just don't know how to do that, Gary. You you might be right. You might be right. But I I'm gonna trust him. Uh, defense signed edge rusher Vic Beasley. So that's good because uh, they lost Logan Reed. They and, need uh, help on that defense yep, bad. And they the lost Jarrell Case. Um, and they are like the the leaders for. The um, oh good gracious, what is it? Um, for the Jadavian Clowney sweepstakes. 
So I don't. I don't but know I don't what Clowney wants, that. man. Yeah. I don't know what Clowney wants. I don't either. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. The Browns sense have why made a him a one-year, two-year, three-year, and four-year deal all around $17 million a year. Yeah. And he has said no to all of them. So he don't want a short deal. He don't want a long deal. I don't know what the hell he wants. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? He wants $25 million a year is what he wants. Yeah. I uh, So going through the schedule, I've got them going 10 and 6, but I think I'm a little bit biased. I, if I were going to do it, I'd probably do 9 and 7 again. Well, okay. Yeah, that's not crazy. I got him 9 and 7. I think that's what this team is. And I'll tell you this. I That turnover margin is going to regress. They're going to go below so back to the mean. They're not getting all those turnovers anymore. And they're going to actually start turning the ball over at some point in time. It's just a numbers game. Ryan Tannehill turned the ball over a little bit in, in his past life. He, he didn't just magically forget how to do that. Um, the offense protects him a lot. Henry doesn't turn the ball over. That's good. But but at some point in time, if they keep throwing more, if they get into games where they have to throw more, the turnover margin is just going to regress back to the mean. Yeah, and you, you might be happen. right about that. One thing that we did have last year, that offensive line was really, really good. Remember, they lost Jack Conklin, uh, and they they brought in draft pick Isaiah Wilson, and they if, expect if Wilson you, to play immediately, and he's a rookie. Yeah. If you would have asked me, and this might be where some of the Jags' wins come from, if you would have asked me what I thought this team's record was, I would have said 7-9 and nine or 8-8 eight and eight because I believe Tannehill – is going to regress back to the Tannehill we've seen in the past more. And you cannot do what they did in the playoffs, which is run Henry for a season. That's yeah. not possible. It, it, it's, a, you know, you can be Superman, but at some point in time, we're all man. So yes. um, it, it's it's just not realistic. Uh, I, I think when they're not able to do that, I think Tannehill is going to show his true colors. I think he's a good quarterback. I don't think he's anywhere close to worth what they what they pay in him. Oh, I I agree with you. I, I would have you. never gone all in with Tannehill. Oh, ever rookie you know. quarterbacks come in just too damn good. Yeah, it it made no sense to me. It made no sense to me. All right, let's move into the NFC South. <laughs> 